Thank you so much for tuning in again and welcome to your very own Triad Before You Buy channel with your host Karamulla Kadwani. Today is going to be all about Amber Nui from the house of Christian Dior in their Privé line. But before we do that, if this is the first time you're tuning into my channel or still haven't subscribed, uh, but enjoy fragrance reviews, price points and alternatives where possible in my humble opinion Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss another video. Amber Nui by Dior is a spicy, woody, sweet oriental fragrance for women and men. Amber Nui was launched in 2018 and the nose behind this fragrance is Francois de Machi. Top notes are grapefruit and bergamot. Hot notes are pink pepper and Turkish rose. Uh, base notes of amber, patchouli, cedar and Gaillac wood. I'm going to try to break this down the best way possible uh, but every time I wear this fragrance this this I experience something different. What's interesting about this fragrance though is it's not clear if it's ambergris or an amber accord traditionally created with labdanum and benzoin. It actually varies depending on where you try to search uh, either the Dior uh, website that states it's an amber fragrance and Fragrantica states ambergris. Let's talk about what I get from this straight off the bat. So though the name of the fragrance translates to amber nights, what I get up top is a beautiful kind of slightly sweet musky rose. It's kind of watery. In ways really thin, just like the last one. Kind of a fresh, uh, pretty rose, skin like musky tones, and a very effervescent kind of a sparkly amber green note that's similar to the one I've got with Creed's back in the day. If you were to tell me it's an amber, I'd definitely buy it. But as per my nose, it's sometimes an amber green accord or note, if you will. Uh, in the newer variations. But if it is ambergris, my best advice to you would probably be to try to get an old batch so you could get the real deal. I mean the real ambergris. Could argue it's both amber and ambergris with the sticky like golden hues but more watered down less sticky because of its watery facets. Opens with a fresh opening of the bergamot and grapefruit with a sparkling ambergris. It then transitions to the Turkish rose with pink pepper and a sparkling like effervescent ambergris note or cord lasting you two hours straight. It's a beautiful sweet rosy mid with that ambergris and curves into the base with the ambergris. Having said that, it hints at something animalic like but less than a shadowy purr than a growl if that makes sense. I have other ambergris compositions that really shine and can kind of put a spotlight on uh, the ambergris note if you will. This one feels slightly salty too that further shows me that there's a hint of ambergris to the composition. Aldehydic, soapy accord, marine like qualities like ambergris floating and bobbing in the oceans endlessly. I would have liked it to be more animalic like maybe uh, ambergris is prominent throughout the entire fragrance. Feels like it is omnipotent. The base is a beautiful combination of gaiac wood and cedar with very slight hints of patchouli giving it that masculine edge. But I'd say a lot of females I've known love this composition as well. As with all other Dior's this one feels watered down as well. So may be best to get a 250 ml and if you're someone like me over spray the heck out of it. Also a uh, suggestion if I may uh, carry a travel atomizer with the juice uh, so that you can refresh it every two to three hours as it's not beast mode and lacks longevity. If you were to ask me as a fragrance connoisseur and collector though I'd suggest buying the Esprit de Parfum if money is not a thing and layer that with overspraying this one on top. Kind of feels uh, woody 
musky with a sense of amber giving it an ambery glow in much smaller quantities but doesn't really go all the way. Very slight citruses on my skin, again very subtle, uh, kind of warm like fresh, sharp peppery kind of nuances with the pink pepper uh, with a spicy light facet. The main vibe is a skin like kind of musky uh, ness and watery rose with a very minimal kind of sweetness. Not very faint but definitely not taking it into the goma direction either is the best way I can explain this. Can ambergris bring musky like nuances because it is end of day an animalic note? Do let me know in the comments below if you have any idea. Sparking like effervescent peppery rose with hints of animalics, rather soft and sensual composition. The musky facets are soft and sensual like, doesn't feel like a hairy or dirty uh, muskiness if that makes sense. Most sensual as mentioned before. After an hour though, uh, gives you a cozy, kind of very expensive cloud like cashmere wool vibe. That's what the texture feels like. Could call this a drawing scent, kind of cuddly, soft, intimate, floral and musky qualities. Uh, may put off the men and I'm doing this as my last review from the preview line So my ranking on the day I'm doing this uh, Today is uh, number five Toba color the top five obviously uh, in my collection. So number five is uh, Toba color number four Oud Rosewood number three Oud Ispahan number two Greedior and number one Amp Nui The patchouli again like the last one uh, reviewed i.e. video so I urge you to go watch that review after finishing watching this one the pink pepper if you ask me also adds this warmth like mentioned in video but this one's kind of weak and doesn't really last all that long this one has been a fracon darling and perhaps uh, all its other contemporaries have got the X except this one which is perhaps one of the best sellers for Maison Christian Dio. Safe blind buy. Really safe blind buy. Really, really safe. Every time you wear it, it wears differently. And I love wearing it some days, marveling at its beauty, and other days it kind of bores the fuck out of me. I'm sorry for my language, but that's 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 the experience I get with this composition. I I don't know what it's about this fragrance, but sometimes it'll just kind of daze uh, there's me and sometimes I just don't give a hoot less about this fragrance. So you can, uh, so you can get these different facets every time you wear it. But those extremities really get to me sometimes. Perhaps weather changes, body chemistries, diet, uh, hydration. I, I don't really know what seems to, does what it does. Uh, but that's my beef with it sometimes. Dries down to this rod of golden ambery use with these powdery like makeup facets. Talking about benzoin on its own in the rawest form gives it these animalic nuances that I'm sure about that are hissing from the shadows in this composition. Maybe a partly dark composition as the name suggests. Ombre Nui, uh, Night, perhaps. I'll wind it up though there's just so much to say because like I said every time you wear this you have different experience and it's, it's hard to kind of uh, put this review together. Just my two cents. Do let me know your thoughts. Also let me know if you have this gem of a composition in your collection or if you're at least giving it a or if you're at least or if you're at least interested in giving this a try after watching this review. Do give me a thumbs up if you take anything of value from this review. Do share your experiences and don't forget to comment. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions and I'll try to answer them to the best of my capabilities. Until the next time, your host Karamullah Kadwani, signing out.